our curious minds. Today, we're diving into the sweet world of science. I've been exploring a fascinating hobby, candy making with a touch of chemistry. Chemistry lets us observe how different materials can change. Today, we're turning sugar and water into something magical, rock candy. Today, we're gonna make rock candy. Yeah, yeah, rock candy. I just like sugar, guys. Sugar, sugar, so sugar. If you get to feed the sugar. Yuna and Yumi are ready to guide you through. Here's what you need to join the fun. A pot with a stove, one cup of water, three cups of sugar, and something that can stir water and sugar like this, chopstick and clothespin. And of course, don't forget your grown-up helper for the stove. First, ask grown-up to heat up water and add sugar gradually, stirring until you can't see sugar crystals. Ever notice sugar crystals? If you look very closely, you can see piles of crystals. Crystals are like little see-through building blocks that are hard and have lots of straight lines. As I mix the sugar in the hot water, the hot water helps break the sugar crystals into tiny pieces until they become so small that you can't see them anymore. When you can't see them anymore, we call it dissolved. Now, before we add more sugar, let's talk about something called a saturated solution. A saturated solution is like a sweet limit for our water. It's the point where the water cannot dissolve any more sugar. You might notice some sugar settling at the bottom, and that's because our water has already taken in as much sugar as it can. Oh, no! It's like our sweet concoction saying, no more sugar guests at this party. So, understanding our saturated solution, let's continue by adding more sugar to the boiling water and stirring. We'll keep stirring until no more sugar can dissolve, and our water is happily saturated with sweetness. Let's take our time cooling down the sugar water solution at room temperature because we're aiming to create something special called a super saturated solution. When we heat up the water, it helps dissolve more sugar. But here's the trick. If we quickly cool down the sugar water solution, the sugar will start making crystals on its own without the candy stick. We don't want this to happen. After letting the sugar water solution cool down to room temperature, Ask your grown-up helper to carefully pour it into the jar. Now, Yuna and Yumi will explain as we let the solution cool. The chopstick comes into play. Yuna and Yumi will dip chopstick it in water, roll it in sugar, and secure it in the jar with a clothespin. Here's the cool science facts. Water can do a better job separating sugar crystals when it's hot. That's why sugar dissolves faster and in larger amounts in boiling water compared to cold water. Do you remember when we added a lot of sugar to hot water? As the hot water slowly cools down, the supersaturated sugar solution will interact with tiny sugar crystals, leading to the formation of growing giant sugar crystals. During this cooling process, sugar crystals reappear, growing larger on surfaces like the chopstick. This is called crystallization, the magic of rock candy. The waiting game begins. Patience pays off in candy making. After three to five days, the crystals harden into rock candy. The result? Crunchy, rock-like sweetness. Want to try? Share your observations and enjoy the tasty rewards. Thanks for joining us on this delicious science adventure. Yuna, Yumi, Foxy, and I can't wait to see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe for more fun at the fort.